Alright, so about a year ago when I got Rising Storm to Vietnam, my friend said, hey, you should also get a game called Postscriptum. It's a great game. So I did, but my computer at the time was equivalent to one of those racing dogs or racing hounds, I believe they're called, except mine was missing a leg. It could go about its daily life just fine, but it wasn't winning any races. So I had to refund the game, and it wasn't until recently where I got a new PC, and I'm like, hey, what if I got Postscriptum and made a review of it? Except the thing is, at the time, I was comparing Hell Let Loose to Postscriptum because I didn't know which one I wanted and I ended up buying Hell Let Loose when I thought I was buying Postscriptum. But I'm like, hey, what the hell? I can just try out the game and if I don't like it, I can always refund it. But I just want to clear one thing up because I get lots of comments, not lots, but I get comments every now and then saying, hey, what computer specs do you have? Can I run this game? What graphic settings can you run on? And I just wanted to say that the graphic recommendations on the Steam page are a lie. Don't, don't believe <laughs> the recommended CPU requirements because it's like oh if you have like a GTX 1070 then that is a recommended graphics card and you know when it says recommended you think you can play the game on like high settings but no I've got a 3060 and I have to play the game on medium I can play it on like high and like the maximum settings but on some maps I just experience a lot of a very high decrease in FPS and this isn't because like my graphics card is like shit or anything it's just because I believe that the game isn't too well optimized and I'm not the only one who's experienced this problem you got people like 2070s, 2080s saying like, oh, why am I getting such low FPS? That's just the way the game is made. That's not actually because of the graphics card being shit. What I mean, another thing that I want to say is that this game is, I, I don't know how else to put it. It's pretty fucking good. It, it's a good game. Some people would say that this is the Battlefield 5 that we deserve to get. And look, when I first got the game, I fucking hated it. I thought that this game was shit. I'm like, I keep on dying. I keep on spawning in the middle of nowhere. I don't know what I'm doing. And I'll get more into that in a second. And you know, I got this comments recently. I like to read my comments, you know, I like to do that. And someone said that they got Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, a game I have 300 hours in. I know the game inside out. And they said, oh, this game is shit. Like, the spawn is shit. I keep on getting killed instantly. And the thing is, to someone who's experienced in a game, you look at that and you're like, wow, like, grow up, you know, get used to it. But, I mean... <sighs> I feel the same way that this guy feels about Rising Storm 2 Vietnam when I first started playing Hell Let Loose. So it just takes time to sort of get into it because my first impressions of the game was like, I fucking hate this game. But anyways, let's get into the actual review. Alright, so speaking of being new to the game, one of the first problems that I found was that there is no training map or offline map where I can test the game's mechanics, or even like test out the weapons or tanks and everything. And I mean, people say, oh, just go into a dead server and play there. It's like, no, because sometimes I might not have an internet connection, and I'm like, hey, I just want to mess around, practice with the weapons and tanks. And don't get me wrong, there is like a tutorial where they have like a guide on each class and everything, and I mean, I'm gonna be completely honest, I'm a lazy cunt with ADHD and I can't sit down down and read a big wall of text for an extended period of time. I know that that's my fault. That's not the game's fault. But I mean, for other lazy cunts out there, I just feel like having an actual tutorial, like in Red Orchestra 2, where they guide you through each weapon class and how to like understand the gameplay me mechanics. Like, I don't know if there's like bullet drop. Do I need to lead the target? I don't know if I'm supposed to do that because it never really said that, you know, oh, you got to lead the target over like a hundred meters. You got to change the zeroing of your weapon. Red Orchestra 2 did that pretty damn well. They even had like a command and tank tutorial, Hell Let Loose does not have this. Also, another thing that I want to say is that if you are Australian, then this game is Australian friendly. And what I mean by that is that there are populated Australian servers that are really full. Like they have 50 v 50 or 100 player servers and a lot of them are fucking packed. So it's good to see that we don't need to connect to American servers to get like 200 to 300 ping. Now, my first impressions of the gameplay itself was not what I was expecting. For starters, the maps, while there aren't too many maps, I think there's nine. Like, I don't know if that's a lot. I, I haven't played on all of them. So it's a, a good amount of maps. And the maps are absolutely massive. And I find this a double-edged sword because for starters, the more area there is, the more it feels like a real and a life battlefield. Because after all, it is a 50 v 50, but it also sucks because at times you will find yourself walking to an objective just to get dicked by someone from a hundred meters away with like a sniper rifle. And I found that very annoying. 
especially with tanks, because one minute you're just driving along, and then BAM! Go f*** yourself, you're dead now. But I mean, I just chalk that up to me being a shit tank commander, really. That's not really the game's fault, that's just, just me being an idiot. But I also suppose that is also realistic, because you wouldn't see the tank explode if you were in it in real life. But back to the maps, right? My biggest complaint is the spawn system. It's pretty hard to understand. Like, you have, like, HQ spawns, garrison spawns, and outpost spawns, and I, I don't really know the difference. I know that if you spawn at an HQ, and you're not a tank commander, you're spawning miles, miles, miles away from the battlefield, depending if you're, like, attacking or defending or what game mode you're playing on. But my, in my experience, I spawned very, very far back from any action. But hey, you know, the good thing is they leave transport trucks at the base so you could get in them and drive to the battlefield. Except, you know, this would be good if you didn't have dropkick teammates who would get in the truck and just drive away. It's like, it's like, okay, I guess I'll walk then. That's perfectly fine. That that, that kind of pissed me off because then I had to... And the thing is, I, I walked from the HQ to the battlefield and as soon as I got near the battlefield, I got fucking sniped. There, there, there's no kill feed and I just died. That's it. All that effort, like 10 minutes of walking to the battlefield, just gone. But yeah, the map especially on the spawn screen, is very flooded, and I just find it hard to actually understand where I'm spawning at. Even the way the weapons handle, it's also good, and the guns handle with a lot more recoil than I expected. Like, I mean, I imagine that firing, like, an M1 Grand has a lot of, like, a, a shit ton of recoil to it. In Rising Storm 2 Vietnam, you know, there, there's some kick to it, but it's manageable. In Hell Let Loose, the guns have insane levels of recoil. And also, if you're getting shot at, there is a suppression mechanic where the screen sort of goes black black and white or a darkish tint and I like this mechanic in Rising Storm 2 Vietnam because it just added to the immersion and I'm glad that this feature is in Hell Let Loose. And you know speaking of immersion like I mentioned previously there is no kill feed and this, this is this is actually so good. At first I, I didn't like this right because I always like to have that kill confirmation. That's why I love to play on rice farming zone for Rising Storm 2 Vietnam because the kill feed is instant you know okay they're dead. Some people don't like this feature and I can't blame you for that I'm not gonna sit here and criticize and say no, you're wrong. My game style is better than yours. No, 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 no. In Hell Let Loose, right, there is no kill feed. You have no idea if you've killed someone, right? And there have been times where I'd like shoot someone, like, are they a friendly? Oh, well, at least the friendlies have like a marker to kind of prevent any friendly fire because if there wasn't, then that could that could cause a lot of problems for me because you need to learn the way the uniforms look. But I mean, I remember the first time that I killed someone in game and it was just, it didn't feel like like a normal feeling in other video games when you kill someone. Like in other games like Battlefield Call of Duty, you kill someone like, haha, and you like teabag them. In this game, it was so different because it's like, oh my god, I just killed someone. I, I don't know if I got the kill confirmation or not. Did I kill a friendly? Did I kill an enemy? And you walk up to the body and you're just looking at them dead on the ground. And you're like, yeah, I, I, I killed someone. And then and then I, I put like an extra couple of bullets in the head just in case if there's like a like a fake mechanic in the game where you can like fake being dead. I don't know if that's in the game. I don't think it's in the game. I don't think it's in any video game. But I mean, I wasn't sure. So I, I kind of put a couple of more bullets in his head to be sure. Now the actual architecture and like the destroyed rubble and everything it feels like a real battlefield and you have planes flying overhead and on my first match I don't know the name of the map it was on a beach and I was camping on a point and freaking the F out and the point got bombed by god knows what and there was a massive just a massive explosion it was so cool and it wiped out my entire squad and we lost the game more or less because I was camping and not using my weapon because I was too scared but nonetheless there was a pretty damn good introduction to the game there is also an abundance of weapons and the only factions at the moment are USA and Germany, you get the typical MP40, Thompson, STG44, M1 Garand, but it would be good to maybe throw in, you know, like the British, the Soviets, eventually, not saying we need to do this now, obviously you want to make sure that the gameplay mechanics and everything are very tip top, maybe add those on later down the line, I want to be, I want to be able to run through Stalingrad with like a PPSH to just use it as a fucking chainsaw against Germans, okay, I really, really need that experience, and I think it'll be beautiful in this game, but I mean, could I really review a World War 2 game without talking about the tanks. I love tanks. If you've been on this channel, you know that I love tanks. And I know that this might be bad, but please forgive me for my sins. If you have been watching my channel for a while, and I say that a lot, Jesus, you'll know that I hate it whenever a noob gets in like an important class, such as the helicopter role in Rising Storm 2 Vietnam and ends up killing everyone. Well, I kind of did the same thing in Hell Let Loose. I put myself in the tank commander role, not knowing anything about it. Because for starters, it's a manual. I'm a Gen Z. We don't drive manuals. <laughs> 
<laughs> except if you live in Europe and literally anywhere else except America and Australia that everyone else drives manuals. But because we're all lazy, uh, we don't drive manuals a whole lot anymore down here or even up there. But I mean, it, the, the tanks feel pretty realistic. I mean, I wish we could have like a real interior to look around in. That would be cool. But I mean, getting in like the gunner seat because each like compartment, like the gunner, driver and everything is separate. I love parking myself somewhere and getting in the like the gunner seat and just like traversing the turret. Just it's it's so much fun. But the thing is, is since it's realistic, the, I never realized how slowly tank turrets like move and it was so painstakingly slow. It's like you see someone in the corner and you're like slowly trying to move the turret. And I'm, I'm like, come on, can't you just like get out and push it and go faster? But yeah, it, it was so much fun. But look, to sum everything up, this is a good game with lots of potential. It isn't like in too much simulator like. I don't think it was made to be like a 100% simulator like postscriptum. It does maintain some arcadey elements to it, which is good because I'm coming from Rising Storm to Vietnam and they're fairly similar. Can I recommend you this game? Absolutely. Uh, this game has a lot of potential to it and I do recommend that you get it. You know, if it's on sale, it's, it's on sale at the moment. I bought it right before it went on sale. So maybe if I refund the game and then rebuy it, would I save money then or would I, I don't know I, I got no idea but anyways I'm gonna end today's video there I hope you guys did enjoy it if you did please do consider leaving a like and subscribing anyways my name is Tantu and I'll catch you guys in the next video peace